In his latest book, The Future of Us, my next guest tackles what we'll be eating, where we'll be living, and who we'll be. Please welcome Canadian science broadcaster and author, Jay Ingram. <laughs> Hello, Jay. Hey. Oh my gosh, it is so nice meeting you. Hi. Welcome to the show. Yeah. I am thrilled. Congrats on this beautiful new book. It's so wonderful. I'm so excited about it. Um, you've written, though, 19 books. Correct? Yeah, that's the 20th. This is the 20th? Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> almost old enough that your books are almost old enough to uh, have a drink in any country, which is fantastic once you get to 21. <laughs> um, so with these 19 books, you're consistently asking questions that we are all so interested in. What is your research process like? Well, uh, you know, when if you set out to write a book about the future, which this kind of is, you realize pretty quickly how difficult that's going to be. Yeah. I mean, I learned it actually when I started writing about AI, mm -hmm. and then Chat GPT came out while my book was practically finished. Oh my gosh. And that was like a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. And and then you get into this horrible position where, well, the manuscript's done, but. But all these things are happening. happening. Well, I've got to write it. No, you can't write it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but the research, you know, as soon as you start to dig into something a little bit, and then you find something else that's curious and yeah. different, and then you go down a long winding path and you write way too much and your editor cuts <laughs> it down and then it's a book. That's amazing. But it's so hard because you have to have everything done early. And basically yeah. you're writing about stuff that might come up as you're working. So that's where the trick is to be a little vague. I like that, I like that, yeah. <laughs> you, you should never make hard predictions, mm -hmm. and people that do are generally shown to be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can say, and this is what I tried to do, look, there are these technologies mm -hmm. that, that we're developing right now. Mm -hmm. Where might they go? Mm -hmm. Might. Might. Careful. That's the key. And then, uh, you know, because uh, I think people, even if they don't turn out, even if we never have flying cars, mm -hmm. right, you still should know that there are actually people thinking about that and might be developing it. Totally. Although I don't think we're going to have very many flying cars. I, don't trust me behind the wheel of a flying car, I can tell you that much. <laughs> well, you, the thing that you do, which is so cool, is you make science accessible. And why is that so important to you? Well, because I started uh, years ago thinking that Scientists, I knew science was really cool, mm -hmm. and I didn't understand why more people weren't reading or watching TV about it or listening to radio, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started that way, but it's kind of changed over the years because now I think we're facing issues like climate change, mm -hmm. like um, as a result of climate change, managing heat mm -hmm. in cities. Mm -hmm. You know, people in Phoenix... Arizona this year would fall on the sidewalk and get burned wow. by being in contact with the concrete. Yeah. So there are issues that, that I think they're not only fascinating, mm -hmm. but are really important. And we've got to at least know they're either here or they're coming mm -hmm. and something's going to have to be done. 100%. That's the thing. You In the future of us, you cover so many technological advancements. Um, for instance, like where we're going, like vertical farming is one of them, correct? Yeah, vertical farming is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And the idea there is that we have tended, with the exception of greenhouses, mm -hmm. to farm on the land and in broad areas, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, the last green revolution, which happened in the 60s and 70s, and actually saved hundreds of millions of people from starvation, mm -hmm. also introduced herbicides, pesticides, too much irrigation, uh, a lot of fossil fuel use in farm machinery, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there were real environmental downsides. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking by 2050, the estimates are we have to produce at least 50% more food than we're producing today. Wow. How are you gonna do that without do having the same kind of negative impact? Yeah. And so vertical farms are one piece. Mm -hmm. How big a piece, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But where you grow plants like in a greenhouse, but you do it vertically. Okay. So have a 15-story building mm -hmm. with uh, uh, every floor growing greens. That, that tends to be what happens now, but mm -hmm. you can grow a variety of plants. Mm -hmm. The beauty of this is if you're not taking up a lot of land, it can be in a city. Yeah. And so then the, the food delivery costs suddenly go, go from huge to almost none. Yeah. Like I went and bought my lettuce at, a, at the farm today and it was, uh, you know, a subway ride. Yeah. And so the trick is going to be the energy consumption of these places. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
they probably won't be able to be run on fossil fuels just because mm -hmm. we're trying to limit that. Mm -hmm. And so solar power maybe mm -hmm. with batteries to keep it going. But mm -hmm. I don't know, Mary, it's one of those things that could really take off. Yeah. Or maybe not. Might fizzle. I, I'm mm -hmm. tending to think, yeah, it'll start developing around urban areas. Yeah. And that'll be great, but it's got to expand beyond romaine lettuce. Totally. Right? Well, expanding beyond romaine lettuce, you also talk about another thing that we might be eating in the future. Oh, can I? Uh, oh boy. Can I interest you in these? In a cricket? Oh my goodness. Um, these are now. I would. <laughs> I would before anyone in the audience goes crazy about this. These are not um, cricket powder or cricket flour. Okay. Like you could put crickets in. In fact, we already eat insects, mm -hmm. you know that. Like in Canada, a little cube of cheese like this is allowed to have the, the remains of five or six mites. This is one thing that we, that we like to not think about, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, of course, you might be saved in that I won't, oh, here we oh, go. Oh, there we go, oh gosh, am so I gonna these, eat a bug? Okay. This is, yeah. not, <laughs> this is not cricket flour. Okay. This is actual crickets. Well, and this is the thing, all around the world, people eat crickets, grasshoppers, things like this. We just don't do it here. Well, until now. Oh my gosh, Jay, are you gonna make me do this? Well, Should I do it? Yeah. Okay. Oh. But does it have a flavor? You're just having one? I'm just having one. I do not so, make me do so more than one. So my recommendation is don't look at it. Okay. <laughs> just, just eat it. Okay. Seriously, Cheers. like this. Cheers. So crum- it, like, it just tastes like a nut. Exactly. Like a little flower. Guys, after this, I'm not gonna be cooking with crickets. Don't worry. We can, uh, the audience can try these. There you go, night. we'll pass them around. Okay, that, um, what an experience, Jay. Congratulations on this beautiful book. I never thought I'd have a gentleman on here who makes me eat a bug, but it's gotta be you. I feel like I've accomplished a first. You truly have. Uh, I really appreciate it, Jay. This is fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.